Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Raleigh Municipal Lighting Plant Board of Water, I mean, Board of Commissioners for April the 11th, 2018. Uh, we're a little bit late this evening. Um, I'll be filling in for Chairman Murray. Uh, remind everybody that this meeting is being audio and electronically recorded. Uh, first on the agenda will be Citizens Query from now. It's uh, eight minutes past seven until approximately 7.13. Uh, first on the agenda is to uh, call the meeting to order and review and accept the previous minutes. Have you uh, read the minutes, Kenny? Yeah, I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have two. I haven't found any exceptions. No. Um, could I have a motion to accept the minutes? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept that. Yeah. I have a motion to accept the minutes um, for, fe uh, for February 2018. And uh, with that, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, with that, they're accepted. And with that, we will move on to agenda uh, number three, solar update. And with that? Bonnie, would you like to give a quick update on the project for Wethersfield Street? Thank you, Dan. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for taking a few moments of your time to listen to our update. Uh, this evening, we'll be presenting before the Planning Board for continued work towards the site plan review, and we anticipate some meaningful progress relative to um, securing our uh, permits and ministerial um, documents. A few wrinkles in the process but we believe uh, collaboratively we'll be able to get through those wrinkles together. So as soon as um, we make that progress, um, I'd be delighted to report back to each of you and um, share some further details. Okay. Just for the record, could you identify yourself? I forgot Thank you. To Bonnie Berkowitz, 623 Weathersfield Street, Raleigh. All right. And Raleigh Solar. Thank you. You're more Bonnie. than welcome. One quick question. So does anyone have any? Yes. Yeah, I do. Sorry. Thank you. Um, just um, are you looking for, uh, I still need information from you to start the... Yeah, we spoke with um, a, a, one of our crew that we anticipate for the construction crew spoke with um, the engineer relative to the interconnect. Okay. Um, on a couple of occasions, they kind of had a bit of a technical chat. So a couple of the... Um, special wrinkles we had. There was a little bit of um, discord relative to um, maybe the investor or whatnot. So we're trying to work um, with our team outside of the public venue until such time that we bring, we're able to bring everyone along together. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I need, I need to get that system impact study done as quickly as possible, you know, for, yes. for everything to get Yep. to keep in motion, so Correct. as soon as you can get me that information, the better. Understood. Okay. That's uh, what we're working towards, and we thought we would have had that um, started a week ago, but I think they made some progress last week Okay. relative to the wiring and what was required and, and um, what they felt um, the system was able to handle. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Thank any you, other, Any questions or concerns or... Kenny, do you have any? No. no. Okay. Thank you for hearing us, and uh, good luck to the gentleman running for positions. Well, two. We have two here <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Good night, Bonnie. Take care. Okay, <laughs> we're moving on to um, item number four, review and accept 2017 DPU report. Okay. With that, um, as always, annually, uh, we have to file a report with the Department of Public Utilities. That report is done uh, mostly by the accountant with information from the staff and myself. Uh, so that is a compilation of all that. So that's the report. I sent it to you in an email to review yes. in order if you have any questions or if I don't think we need to go through the report page by page. I hope that you had already looked at it. Yep. But, okay. Anything that uh, highlight in the report? No, I don't think so. The only, you know, the question I usually get from Chamber Murray is where are we as far as our percentage of uh, revenue goes, and we're about 3%. So with 3% revenue, when we're allowed 8%. So okay. that's, we made money last year, uh, which is a, I didn't think we would, but we did. Okay. And we saw that on the year-end financials when we went over that. So 
And that's basically a report that just takes all those ERAN financials and put them in one place. Okay. Any questions, Ken? Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. Okay, no, no. Right. Dan, thank you so much. Yep. Um, if yes. you don't mind, could you vote to approve that? Oh, yes. So I can, yep. And then we'll sign it. We so have a motion to accept the um, 2017 DPU report. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. <laughs> okay. And moving on from item four, we will go into item five, green communities information. Dan? The, uh, at the last meeting, um, we had a discussion with one of the um, audience members about the green communities program and yes. why isn't Rowley... Uh, part of the Green Communities Program. I said to the board that I would get you information uh, for that program just so the board understands what's involved in participating in the program, what's involved, um, and it also details what's involved is on the town side of involvement in the program. So basically I'll hand out that information. We can go through it really quickly. Anybody else? It's now 714. Citizen query is now over. Thank you. So basically, this is the information off the DOER website that highlights step by step how to become a green community. Mm -hmm. And basically, a green community is something that the residents and customers of the light department would have the opportunity to receive grants from the DOER because we're a participating green community. So we can I'll take a look at this and mm -hmm. we can kind of go through it really quickly. Um, basically, the Green Communities Program, they have five, five conditions that you have to meet in order to be a green community. Uh, first one, they, they go through the first five right on the front page, the five, five steps. Um, it's the five criteria. It's important to review all the detailed guidance for each criteria. Links to web pages are, you know, in the document. A municipality applies to the DOER Green Community Division for a designation to demonstrate that it meets the five specific designation criteria. These criteria, along with documentation submission requirements, are outlined in this document. So we'll go, I guess we'll skip to the, let me see, where does the start laying out? So on page three, it lists, starts listing out the criterion. Mm -hmm. So criterion one, uh, as of right, citing renewable energy, alternate, alternative energy. So a municipality must provide zoning in designated locations for as of right, citing of renewable or alternative energy generating facilities or renewable or alternative, alternative energy research and development facilities renewable or alternative energy manufacturing facilities. <clears throat> and it goes into describing what these facilities are, and this would be have to be go through the zoning. So basically go through the zoning board, have the zoning board approve it, and then town meeting to approve the zoning bylaw changes. Uh, criterion two is expedited permitting. So a municipality must adopt an expedited application and permitting process under which Criterion 1 facilities may be cited within the municipality and the permitting process shall not exceed one year from the date of initial application to the date of final approval. And it goes into different um, things on, on that criterion as far as what you need, what the criterion has to be as far as the facilities go. And it highlights different sections of the law also <coughs> in these different criterion. Any questions or comments so far? Or? In order to accept this, I might have missed it because I was reading ahead a little bit. Do, does this have to be accepted at town meeting? Yes. So. Town meeting has to approve not only the bylaw changes but also mm -hmm. the, I believe, the Green Communities Act in itself. Okay. Is it a unanimous, I mean, a two-thirds uh, vote, or? That, I don't know. I think it does say something in this about okay. a vote, but uh, we can get to that point. All right. Um, on page five, criterion three was energy baseline 20% energy reduction plan. 
This basically says the municipality must come up with an energy reduction plan to reduce the energy consumption of all the municipal buildings within the town uh -huh. by a certain range, and that has to be completed. Um, I believe it's five uh, after completion of the f of all five years of imp implementing its ERP. So it has to be done within five years. Just doing the lights, I would think that would reduce it twenty. You could reduce twenty percent. It may, uh, depending on what what the building is. Yeah, um, yeah. The library may. It may be just lights. This building uh, could be lights and heating, mm -hmm. you know. But it's just a matter of the the town has to come up with this twenty percent reduction for all the all the municipal buildings. And again, it goes into the documentation documentation required to meet the criterion. So it lays out all the documentation you have to have as far as what the plan needs to be, uh, the timelines, and everything else for submitting the materials. Uh, criterion four is purchase only fuel efficient vehicles. So all departments in the municipality must purchase only fuel efficient vehicles for municipal use whenever such vehicles are commercially available and practical. That may be on the agenda tonight. <laughs> At least for this department, anyway. <laughs> um, that's pretty self explanatory. Mm -hmm. uh, criterion five is minimize life cycle cost. This one is a little bit more detailed than the last one. I won't read it all, but I'll read the first paragraph. A municipality must require all new residential construction over 3,000 square feet and all new commercial and industrial real estate construction to minimize, to the extent feasible, the life cycle cost of facilities, buildings by utilizing energy efficiency, water conservation, and other renewable or alternative energy technologies. So basically, it, it goes on to say you have to accept a certain building code, a stretch mm -hmm. code, that has to apply to all new commercial and residential buildings. So every new building would have to be energy efficient and apply to this new building code. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say what that building code is, gives you examples of what not, and gives you the documentation required to do that. So it, it is an involved process. Mm -hmm. uh, it involves not only the light department, um, basically, the light department, the only thing we have to do is accept the Green Communities Act and we have to charge our customers a half a mil on every residential customer within the town. So it's .005 that goes on every bill and that would basically go to the Green Communities Program. Okay. And then there would be a s separate um, Green Community Fund? That would be set up? The, they, no, the fund itself is paid for by the DOER and Reggie oh, okay. funds. <clears throat> so every, every wholesale electricity um, supplier pays into this fund, mm -hmm. but not everybody has access to it. If you're a green community, you, green have, community, access, you have access to the grant. Access to the grant money, which is okay. the Reggie funds. So if you're not a green community, you don't have access to these funds. So that's part of the thing of becoming a green community is access to those Reggie funds for grants. So customers and uh, residents can get grants for different energy efficiency projects. So in order to put this, we'll probably have to look at um, either next year or November, if there's a November town meeting to put this on. It, yeah, it would, and like I said, it would, it's, it's going to be involving, uh, like the building department, it's going to involve the zoning bylaw changes, it's going to involve a, a, a number of boards to okay. basically get on board to, it might, it might take a meeting of all these all involved to kind of go through the process and see if they're all, you know, if they're all willing. So I'll probably really kick, that, kick this out to uh, next spring's town meeting, probably, to get all the boards on If on it, board. You know, even if all the boards are willing to accept mm -hmm. the different, you know, <clears throat> the different guidelines that are in this. You know, I can't speak for anybody else besides the light sure. department, so it'd be up to them to kind of accept all the, everything that's in here. Does that kind of answer your questions as far as what you had brought up the last? I know we had talked about this the last time yeah. as far as the green communities. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Okay. Light department could be an opportunity to be a driver. Yep. Okay. okay. Any other questions on that? Or, I mean, if, if you want more information, you can go out to the DOE web, DOER website or just search <coughs> Green Communities Program and it comes up with a whole list of different things. Who would be the first that would, we would 
<clears throat> in order to kick this off to down the, down the road to start looking at all these items? I would say if you really wanted to basically kick it off, I'd say it had to be the selectmen. The selectmen? Okay. The selectmen, if the selectmen say we want to be a green community, then it would basically filter down from them to all the different boards. Okay. So we should um, <clears throat> send this um, recommendation from the light, light board over to the Board of Selectmen? Or that's up to you as far as a, as a commission, but I mean, we can have that discussion. You know, if you want to have that discussion at the selectman level, why don't we? Um, <clears throat> we'll have a change in the board uh, next month when we hold off and do it. Okay. Next month's meeting. Okay. We'll bring okay. this back up. So let's table this. I have a motion to table this. A motion to table this. Yeah, make a motion to table it. Yep. Okay. I have a motion to table it. Um, yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll bring it up next month. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, we move on to item number six electric vehicle program update. With that, Dan? Paperwork. <clears throat> Uh, so we've been talking over the last well, four or five meetings anyway about yeah. EVs and EV programs and we had a presentation by one um, company that they came in and did a presentation to the board about EV programs and what he's gonna what he's gonna did he, yeah he came to the boards um, yes yeah and then we had a meeting with a number of municipalities after that to mm -hmm. kind of get the feel for what he was offering, how much it was going to cost, and what benefit would be to the municipality and the mm -hmm. customers. Um, there hasn't been a lot of consensus with the different municipalities that from that meeting. So um, we had a discussion with another company who's offering uh, basically a different program, same program but just different parameters in the program. <clears throat> Um, and this presentation, we can go through a page by page if you want, just to get a feel for what they're offering. The first few pages are basically the same thing we've kind of heard before. The electric vehicle market overview kind of gives you an overview of the EV growth, how we, th we think, and that's the reason why we want to be out ahead of it. Um, where we think the market's going to be in the next few years. Uh, you know, and we want to be able to drive the bus as far as what the customers are getting, how they're charging their vehicles. So the next one is beneficial electrification. Um, I'm not going to read every bullet slide, but sure. it kind of enables better grid management, uh, shifting system load from on-peak to off-peak. Again, that kind of goes to the fact that we want to drive the bus as far as when people charge their cars because we don't want to hit a new peak when we have all these customers come home with their EVs and charge at 4 in the afternoon and uh, how setting a new peak is going to cost us a lot of money. So the next slide is uh, goes to that point of managed charging. Uh, we need to incent um, the EV charging behaviors to align with load patterns. So basically what that is is either we have a um, off-peak rate, we have some kind of incentive to customers to incentivize them to charge at the time we want them to charge and not the time they want them to charge. And either penalize them or not give them the incentive for charging at a time that we don't want them to charge. Would the um, smart charges, would that come into play in this? Or uh, have they been developed enough to, um, to begin to use those? Yes and no. Um, yes, okay. you, can, you can basically, if they give us control of the smart charger, mm -hmm. we can tell the smart charger to charge certain times of the day. The only problem is that um, it requires some infrastructure. And if we had an AMI infrastructure, which, which is automated meter infrastructure, we don't have that. It would make it easier for us to implement stuff like that. 
we have AMR, which is just a, a drive-by system that we right. read. Um, there's an option that they describe in here about um, having the charges networked so we can communicate, communicate with them via Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And if we can communicate with the charger and not allow it to charge certain times and tell it to charge at certain times, more than likely, though, customers will be able to override the charger or override the programming, and that's when we need to be able to say, okay, if you want to override the programming, mm -hmm. you're going to face a penalty or you're not going to get your incentive for that month because you overrode the charging. And we need to know that, so that's part of the right. mm -hmm. the smart charger and knowing when it's charging and when it's not. Because you could, you could affect the, the, the peak load. Yes. Yeah. If you have enough of them, you can affect the peak load, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I can see all kinds of little glitches and problems that can arise um, by overriding the, the smart charger. And, and part of the smart charger is, is um, also in the future, I, I don't know how long in the future would be to use the electric vehicle as a battery for our system. So which means the battery of the car would supply would reverse power flow into the system okay. in order for us to take to, and do peak shaving, to demand shaving and peak shaving. Oh, yeah, you could do, yeah. You, that's yeah. that's a ways down the road, but the smart charger would be, you know, that would be capable of doing that. <clears throat> and that's another reason why I think we want to incentivize the smart charger. It's, it's the future is it's going to be, I, you know, I hadn't even thought about that as, as a, um, as the battery for the vehicle to be to feed back into the system. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, the, some of these batteries, I'm not sure what the battery sizes are, but they're they're good sized batteries. And if you have enough of them, enough of them on your system, it can <coughs> it can affect your system to the good or to the bad. Yeah. And I still haven't developed that capacitor battery yet that they've been looking at. So if that if that comes in, that's the one where you just what they dream about is that you just hook it up and within seconds it, it takes the charge. Yeah. 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 So uh, the next slide is just Massachusetts facts. It just goes on to you know tell you electric charging stations, uh, PV sales, environmental bond bill. There is money out there for us to, um, to get a grant uh, to put in charges, mm -hmm. public charges, things like that is part of the whole um, Volkswagen settlement uh, a while back. Okay. Um, that that money is used for. You can get grant money from that to put in public vehicle charges and things like that. So. Um, the next couple of pages are low growth opportunities. Mm -hmm. Ours is the last last one. There is a there's one mistake on the. Uh, I think there's only. She used old data, but the population data must be really old at 1416. I don't know when that was, but. 1630. Maybe. 39. But so that number is incorrect. But the um, the residential retail rate is is fairly close. I think she used an old number for that one and the retail rate. Because right now we're about 16.166, so it's about a penny, penny and a half off. But it gives you a general idea what we could gain mm -hmm. uh, by having this new revenue as far as, you know, people charging their cars. It's, it's, again, this is going to, you know, the price of gasoline versus the electric vehicle. And, you know, people are going to have to, you know, until that, until the battery gets perfected, that battery we can get a, you know, a good charge. You know, quickly. I think people are hesitant to, to, you know, to look and say, "I want an electric vehicle right now." Of course, there's a lot of, you know, as the gentleman who came in here talked about, you know, you, you can get a charge for, you know, two, three hundred miles yep. right now, and everybody's looking for that four hundred, five hundred, you know, mile, and it's not, not there. It's not there yet. No. And I, I think that'll be the catalyst that drives us forward on this. Um, and, and to that point, the next slide talks about consumer awareness, uh, developing a website, um, charging management, um, charging stations, 
LMI programs, fleet programs, and demand response. Kind of, we, we've already kind of touched on that briefly, mm -hmm. but I think the consumer awareness is probably the probably the biggest one to let customers know. Uh, they would develop a website for us, mm -hmm. so that you know we'd have a, a website separately just for the EV program, and that would be customer outreach, would be customer information, would be a dedicated 800 number for customers to call for questions and answers and. So consumer awareness support, kind of what I just said, uh, provide and maintain information website, provide informational call center as an 800 number, a campaign management, uh, ride and drive events, and auto dealership education, which means, from what I've been told, that sometimes when you go into a dealership and you talk to a salesman about EV, they don't, they're not up to speed on <coughs> what the EVs are, what the actual benefit to the customer is as far as an EV goes. They know um, they know that, that it does more gas, mm -hmm. but they don't know what the relationship between a gallon of gas is and a kilowatt hour as far as the customer goes. So they can't say, I believe um, the first gentleman said it's about a dollar fifty a uh, gallon of gas yes. for a kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and I don't think the dealerships are going to be able to, you know, give that information to the customers. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is part of this program is, is giving that information to the customers so they understand what the benefits are to them and giving the, the information to the dealership so the dealerships can then relate that information to the customer as well. Well, I mean, when I went to, I think I told you when I, a year ago about a hybrid, and it was like, just around, go, get Doug. <laughs> He's the salesman right. that's familiar with hybrid. Yeah. You know, that's um, just the way it is. You know, but their, their, their business model is changing, too. Yeah, yeah. So EVSE incentives. EVSE is basically the charging infrastructure or the charger that, that the customer would use. Um, develop process to identify customers uh, upon purchase of vehicles, marketing rates and rebates, and rebate processing, and provide information, act as trusted advisor, which would be the light department, you know, giving information to the customer. Mm -hmm. LMI programs, service the low-income populations who send a large percent of their budget on transportation. Again, we go to the fact that it costs less the drive an EV to work as it does a gas-powered car. So, uh, fleet programs, which, you know, is one of those things that um, the program they're proposing is a la carte. So there's different parts of this program that we, would, that we as a group would say, yeah, we like A, B, and C, but we don't like D and E, so we'll go with A, B, and C, and they have prices for each option. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't want to participate in the fleet program at this time, we say, all right, we don't want option D, but we want option A, B, and C, which is nice because you know, it gives us the options to basically do that. Uh, VW Massachusetts is what I was saying about the grant. That's what I can, yep. All right, steps to take. Help drive cons consumer awareness, track and manage charging, uh, assist in fleet electrification, utility, muni, customer, build relationships with partners in key areas for infrastructure, financing, economic development, transportation services, and plan for EV grid integration, determine value of managing and aggregating charging. So in the next few slides goes into what the uh, pricing is. For the, um, this is a draft, so this is not definite pricing, but this mm -hmm. is kind of where they're thinking the prices, pricing would be. And this, you know, the nice thing about this plan, like I said, it's, it would be tailored to each municipality, mm -hmm. whereas the other program would be, everybody has to take the same program and basically in the same dealerships and whatnot, this would be... Well, if I if if um, utility A wants program B, mm -hmm. 
I don't have to take as utility C take program B. I can take A and C. You know, it's like it, it, the options are a lot better with this program than the other one. It makes it a little easier, I think, for municipalities. It gi also gives you additional optional services, ride and drive events, EV ambassador programs, and dealership education programs. So I'll let you, I'll leave this with you, and if you have any other questions, just let me know. It has an appendix that kind of goes over, you know, electric vehicles as well. Good job, Dan. This is interesting. It's uh, something that we, I don't think we can avoid as far as how quick it happens. I don't think anybody can say. But, um, like, I think I, I skipped over it, but one of the slides shows that we have, I think we have, Groban was the, the leader in all the programs, uh, all the cars. I think mm -hmm. they had, like, eight, six or eight, but we only have, um, I think. Three? I think it was three. Yeah, I thought it was three. Yeah, it's three. Kevin's now 82 Hillside Street here in Raleigh. Just so you know, even though we may have the most number of Just did not fire yourself. Excuse me. I'm you sorry. Did. I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, we may have the most number of, you know, battery and EV vehicles, hybrid vehicles on that chart. We have zero people beating down our door looking for this program. Mm. So uh, I presented this to my board last night, and we decided to table it. Um, just because I don't feel it's matured to a point where we want to get involved. I do want to be ready for it. I do believe in creating a second rate for off-peak metering, um, you know, to provide an incentive for people to charge it at that time. And I believe in, you know, using them, using that rate to shape your demand curve. Mm -hmm. Some of the other stuff I'm not sold on yet, but that's, you know, for you guys to decide and it, each town decides what right. do you want to do? Every town is different. I, you know, we we, we got, we went to the Nepper, you know, mm -hmm. Dan and I last year, and you know they they had a great you know presentation and everything else, and it got hung up on the battery when they got to the battery portion, and people didn't elaborate on that because the battery hasn't been perfected yet, you know, and I, I think that's going to be again the catalyst that that drives this whole thing, and then the price of gasoline. So the price of gasoline goes up. And, you know, people look and start to evaluate, and then they start to hear, you know, if they perfect this battery, you know, especially this capacitor battery that they're talking about. That's a game changer. I think as you see more choices in vehicles come out, you'll see people more willing to adopt them, not only with a battery, mm -hmm. but, you know, I myself, I like driving a pickup truck. There's really not a lot of options There's, out there. Yeah. No yeah. options, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, then we're not too far from autonomous vehicles. Yes, that's another part of this. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I, I've, I've said it before, but this is like 1880 to 1910 when, you know, external combustion engines were fading and internal combustion engines were coming in, you know, and people were, you know, sh still showing horses, you know, and we were talking about this Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, you know, and, and what, they, what they were talking about, um, they showed a number of slides, okay, at this presentation that they gave, and they're showing all these horses. And ten years later, they're showing all these cars. You know, that's how fast it's gonna it's gonna hit. So, in you know, ten years is it's a short span of time. So, that's all I have. <laughs> well, well, I guess the next steps would be um, the the woman that gave the presentation um, was going to develop a, uh, a scope of work. I received it today, but I didn't have time to really analyze it to kind of present it to the board tonight. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll look over that statement of work, I'll forward it to you, and then we can have a discussion at probably the main meeting about the statement of work and what we, if we're prepared to move forward with a program or if we're not prepared to move forward, we can have that a continuing discussion at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, item number seven. Purchase of EV um, vehicle. Yes. Elect electric vehicle for a light department. Yes. Um, 
basically I have uh, we have I have we have a vehicle in the fleet that's aging mm -hmm. um, what year is it the Tacoma it's uh, 1990 2000 yeah, maybe exactly um, and my feeling my opinion my feeling um, if we're gonna start pushing an EV program I feel we should have an EV yeah. um, as a kind of a, um, a show that you know to residents that you know we're yeah we're not just talking we have one in our fleet um plus if we go with the green communities we're gonna have to have one anyway so yeah. um i just wanted the kind of board approval to to uh, to look into an ev uh it is in the capital budget to purchase a vehicle mm -hmm. uh, i believe i put it in i think it was around 30 or thirty-five thousand in the capital budget to purchase a, a vehicle this year um yeah. as far as what ev I'm going to have to do some research as far as what we want, what we you know. It's going to be for around town, um, if, if uh, they want to use to go to meetings, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it'll be used for go to read the meters every month. Well, so. Get us familiar with charging stations and how they work and smart yeah. charges and, you know, it would be good, a good learning device for us. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for me and for basically for the staff to, to know what it takes to Basically, yeah. get an EV installed in your home, a charger, and have an EV in your home. So we give you a motion to uh, ask for a motion to ex for Dan to explore an EV vehicle purchase of one. Yeah, make that motion. Yeah, make that motion. And we have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll kind of I'll get an idea of what you know what I want to purchase before yeah. I do it, and then I'll come back to the board and say, you know, this is kind of the vehicle we're looking at, and these are the general prices for the vehicle. And, even though you gave me the motion to look at it, we'll kind of mm. do it that way. Sure. Okay. Well, can I ask a quick Something. question about it? Sure. When you do get this vehicle, would this be something that would be lettered up similar to what Braintree does with their EV program? I know it's all lettered up. It says electric vehicle, so on and so forth. So, you know, that when the public sees this, it's not just another car driving around with a blue plate. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The, it, it should have some kind of striping on it or something, or, or a, um, maybe a green and blue striping so that to well they have um i believe braintree and other utilities have the have the artwork already done oh they do and it kind of it, it they do look sharp and it, it is yeah. promotes the ev part of it so i'll look into that as well you know one of the utilities has a program where they use um propane vehicles and they have that Detail. I can't remember which utility it is, but uh, I've seen seen the vehicle and it just says propane vehicle. I've seen the mass highway one. Is it that. mass highway? Maybe that's what it is. Okay, I wasn't I wasn't really sure. Okay. Okay, but you know it's it's not like we have a pickup truck there now. It won't be a pickup. It'll be because it's like <clears> um, we don't they don't have they don't offer an EV. It'll be oh it'll be a hundred percent EV. It won't be a uh, hybrid. It won't be a electric yeah. over gas it'll be a hundred percent ev yeah. strictly a battery car it won't be anything besides that yeah i think that's what we need to do that it you know in, let's explore the bugs you know see the bad side as well as the good side right now yeah and then you know, and you know there's going to be in in, in, the, in the beginning so and it won't be a tesla <laughs> no, I don't think it will be a Tesla. No. Well, if it's not a Tesla, it's going to be a BMW i7. Though. Oh, there we go. I like that. Though. Yeah, I'll, drive them back. I'll drive that back and forth. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to uh, reliability award, number item number eight. Um, just so the board knows, and I did send you an email. I sent you the, um, the copy of the reliability award. We won the e-reliability award uh, again this year. Uh, for um, comparison to utilities in our zone, mm -hmm. uh, and it's from APPA. Uh, basically, the reliability award gives us um, kudos for being reliable to our customers and not, a lot, or not having as many outages as other utilities do. So it compares us to other utilities in size and region mm -hmm. and basically says that you had less outages than the next guy. So I, I have to, you know, Riley White, a lot of credit for being proactive, especially in tree trimming. And uh, that, as anybody involved in utility work knows, that, that really cuts down on you know, outages. And, and I, I would go on to say that I don't know how the recent um, outages from National Grid are going to affect that. 
I believe it's a different criteria, and I'm not sure it's going to affect our numbers or not, but mm -hmm. we'll see, I guess, next year because we had a lot of zeros on our meter, on yeah. everybody's meter. Yeah. I don't know where that's going to, that's all politics, and that's the legislature right now, you know, I would imagine, where um, they explore the reasons for the outages. Well, since we're on the subject, uh, can I continue with that sure. line? Um, I have a meeting, or I think the utilities in the general area are going to have a meeting with um, representative from National Grid to kind of get their perspective on why, how, and mm. what they're going to do basically to fix it. Yeah. So um, I'm not, I should leave my personal families out of this, I'm not, I'm not holding up a lot of hope for what they're going to say, but, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what they say and I kind of go from, we'll go from there. Well, they, you know, what was it, um, two outages in three weeks? Yeah. Or was it three? And I can't remember exactly. It's just it was two in two weeks that two were weeks. prolonged more than 12 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know other utilities, Merrimack was out even longer. Mm -hmm. Ipswich was about the same timeline as us. Groveland was out a little bit less than us. Georgetown was um, a little bit less than us on, on a couple of them. But. I, Ipswich is on the same run. Ipswich okay. is down downstream from Raleigh, so they had the same outages we had. So they, they came when they, when we, we came up first, a few minutes first, and then they came up afterwards. Yeah, they would have been on about the same time as us, so... Um, just a thought. Maybe we should explore a Facebook page. I meant to, um, because I saw that um, Ipswich Light. I just they their Facebook page for the Light Company was. Mm -hmm. We were talking to a lot of people, you know, and keeping people informed. We can have a discuss if you want. We can have a separate agenda item on it. For yeah, we'll talk about that on next because I, I have my own feelings on that, so we can have yeah. a discussion yeah, about that. Sure, um, but I, you know, a lot of people were using it, and uh, mm -hmm. we can we'll talk about it. Okay, okay. And with that, anything else, Dan? Um, I have one more thing. Um, sure. This is uh, Commissioner Key's last meeting, so I yes. kind of like to recognize uh, Commissioner Key's for his service to the Light <laughs> Department. <laughs> What was it three terms now? Nine years as commissioner? Three years, yeah. Yep, yep, three terms. Yeah, it's just so one term. Appreciate your service to the light department. Mm. Been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> now, Kenny, thank you so much for all you know, these past nine years, your service to the, the town of Raleigh and um, you know, as a commissioner. You know, it's 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 once a month, but it's it's necessary. So oh, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I know yeah, Bob was here tonight. To be, he would yeah. he would thank you. Yeah. And you had service before that with the Light Department, so, so you have a long, long line, you know, of uh, service to, to the Raleigh customers. So thank you, Kenny. Yeah, just kind of knowing what it was like when, you know, for the guys out there, you know, because I was out there, I know what they're going through. It, so it gets cold out there in the winter, doesn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, people don't uh, people don't realize when you're hanging from a pole, it's it's. Um, oh, I know. It's, it's a little bit different when the snow is blowing, you know. And you're all young enough to know. <laughs> yeah, you that's know. the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, next next month, um, about the date for the meeting, uh, it's it's the day after. Day after town. Day day after the election, and I can't do the following Wednesday. Okay. So. Um, I, we, since the two um, candidates that are running are here in the audience, I asked them um, if either one of you get elected, would you have any problem getting sworn in before the meeting on the next day? Okay. okay. So. All right. So we'll have the we'll have the meeting on the. On the ninth. On the ninth. Yeah. Okay. Sounds as, good. As long as you guys don't mind, is whoever get whoever gets elected can get sworn in that before the meeting at seven o'clock. Okay. Okay, cool. I know the boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we're the uh, last item. Do I have a motion to motion, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The mo me meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and good night.